Titus. You go right toward Revelation. Probably the biggest book right before Revelation is Hebrew. And if you can find Hebrews right before Hebrews, you'll run into Titus. If Titus, Philemon, and Hebrews, and Philemon is probably just one sheet of paper in your Bible. If you can find the book of Titus, Titus is after first and second Timothy. You can find the book of Titus once you go to Titus chapter 3. And as is the case with most of my messages, this will be a very simple message, but I hope that it'll, that it'll be something that will stir you up with profound truths, right. even though they are simply powerful truths. Talking about Christian living. Amen. Now, if you're here and you're not sure you're saved, you've heard the gospel message already. Yes. And you've heard that the gospel is something that is responded to by faith. The obedience to the gospel is not baptism like the Church of Christ people tell you. Yeah. Obedience to the gospel is faith. The Bible says in Romans 10, it says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. Yeah. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report. Yeah. That's what this obedience to the gospel, believing the report. Titus chapter 3. Have you found the book of Titus yet? If you haven't, just give up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Titus chapter 3. I'll be done with the message for you located. Let's stand together. Titus chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. Titus 3 is a wonderful chapter. It's got one of the clearest statements in the Word of God to let you know that your works do not save you. I'm going to use that passage to show you that in the same passage where it says that works do not save you, that after you're saved, you ought to work at maintaining your works. Yeah. Yeah. Titus chapter 3, if you have it, verse 1 says, Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, Deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. That's a description of your average person. We all are like that. The degree to which we didn't get involved in some of that usually just has to do with our fear of the consequences. We didn't want to have a divorce. We didn't want to go to jail. We didn't want to get beat up or whatever. But after we lived that way, so thankful there was a divine interruption. Amen. Verse 4, but after that the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, Amen. not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, Amen. he saved us. Amen. By the washing of regeneration, I'll go ahead and tell you this while you're standing, that's not the washing of water baptism. Washing of regeneration, we sing about when we say, Are you washed in the blood? In the blood. Washing of regeneration being washed in the blood of the Lamb. And renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is in heretic after the first and second admonition rejects, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself. We're going to pause our reading there. We're going to use verse 8 for our text, and then we'll pray. Verse 8 says, This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly. Now, folks, because of what this verse says, I feel justified in preaching the type of message I'm preaching this morning. Real regular. I will that thou affirm constantly. What? that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. Amen. Why? Be saved? No. These things are good and profitable 
unto me. Amen. Heavenly Father, please bless the message to our hearts. Lord, I pray that the month of December will be a great month for everybody uh, that comes to this place for assembly, to worship, and for edification. And I pray, Lord, even in this service today, that some Christian will be stirred up to uh, move on in their Christian life to keep doing right. And I pray if there's anyone in our midst who's unsaved, that the Holy Spirit would strip them of their fig leaves of self-righteousness and help them to see their need for the righteousness of God available through faith in Jesus Christ. For we pray these things in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 Won't you be seated, please? As we approach the end of the year, you save people. As we approach the end of the year, what's been done for Jesus Christ in your life Amen. this year? Yeah. Some of you have been very faithful this year. Amen. Some of you have taken some steps forward Amen. this year. Amen. But for many of us, we're getting to the end of the year and we're thinking about, well... I'm just about the same where I was at last year. When the calendar goes around like this for me, it stirs me up to examine myself that way. Yeah. And I don't, I, I do not have to look better, feel better, have more food, have more money or whatever for me to be able to say it's a been a good year. That's right. But when I examine my faithfulness to God, my fruitfulness in the Lord's work, and that kind of thing, it makes me wonder, do I need to do better in this coming year? Have I slacked off? The fact is, is that if you don't pay attention to this message, it could very well be that some of you saved people will not be sitting in these pews next year at this time. <clears throat> we actually have a number of people who are in these pews who came into this church this year. Amen. Some of you came into the Lord this year. I'm thankful for that too. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk to you about days to come. And as you examine yourself, have you ever wondered why, if you've been saved for years, why is it that you've been saved for years even though the preacher, and, and you're going to have a hard time coming here without hearing. The preacher's preached on it, but some of you have been saved for years, and you still have not read this book from yeah. front to back. Not That's one right. time. And I'm going to tell you once again, you can read the Bible through from front to back in the coming year. Yeah. The average person in this room who can read can read this book through in one year if you'll give God 15 minutes right. every day. Amen. If you'd set your alarm so that you could get up, and uh, I'd set my alarm where the coffee went off at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And get up and get your cup of coffee and sit down wherever it might be, hard chair, soft chair, at a desk or whatever. You could read your Bible through from cover to cover if you give God 15 minutes a day Amen. this year. Why is it that some of you don't go soul winning every week. Mm -hmm. And did not go uh, last year. Didn't go single time. Never went soul winning. Why did some of you don't pray regularly when you're at home? Some of you talk more to yourself than you do talk to God. <laughs> Amen. I'm talking about people especially that live by themselves. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Anybody know it's like talking to yourself out loud? Yeah. Okay, if you live by yourself. Of course, some of you women probably think you might as well be yep. talking to yourself because of the way the husband listens. That's Come right. on, say amen, ladies. Um, why is it? <laughs> why is it that some people haven't haven't uh, tithed and given offerings regularly this year? Talk about it. I'm gonna start doing it, and still you're a god robber. Right. You're still a god robber. Right. I tell you. Why is it that some people have never learned to be faithful to all the services? Yeah. Some people, you can count on them that you can't count on. <laughs> you never know whether they'll show up or not. You hope they will. Here's the answer. And it comes from verse 8. Now I'm going to put it this way. Here's the problem. You don't have 
a good spiritual maintenance program. You got to maintain what you're doing or you're going to fall apart. I told my wife about this little old car. We got a 2000 uh, old car that we bought here in Jacksonville about seven years ago for $4,000. We really like it. But it's got a, got a problem. We got to get, I told her, I said, we got to get that thing to the mechanic, get him to look at it, find out what it is, or it is just going to dry up there and it's not going to ever crank again. Mm -hmm. Why? It's not being maintained. That's right. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody yeah. had grandma's car stay in the yard, didn't get cranked up, <laughs> and eventually got so locked up it wouldn't crank up for anybody. Nobody could get that thing to crank. They don't have, you got to have a maintenance program. For things to hold up. Those of you who know something about automobile engines, uh, I've heard I've heard a lot of people talk about automobiles and automobile engines. Uh, they have certain things in their mind that that need to be maintained. One of them, for instance, is your oil. Yeah. And anybody that's messed with cars and looked at car engines after they've been pulled out, they know what a difference it makes when the oil is changed mm -hmm. than when the oil just sits in there. And, it's all gunky and dirty and, and all that kind of thing. you got to have a maintenance program. And our verse 8 says, This is a faithful saying, and these things I will, that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good, profitable unto men. The title of the message is, How to Keep Doing Right, all of your life. Amen. How to keep doing right all of your life. Now, the truth is, back in the old days, um, if a car made it past about 80 to 120,000 miles back in the old days when I was a youngin', uh, it did good. Yeah. I mean, you were really doing good. Matter of fact, back in, back in those days, if a car got up to about 60,000 miles uh, on it of travel, you better trade that thing in. Yeah. <laughs> Because it, it would be anywhere between 10 and 40,000 miles, you're going to be trading an engine out if you didn't trade a car in yeah. back in those days. Now, sometimes, you know, car engines will last 200,000 miles or more yeah. in, the, in the same vehicle if they're properly maintained. Why is it that some Christians, uh, we've got some Christians in our church since I've pastored here that have been in the same church for many, many years, mm -hmm. you know, working for the Lord. I'm looking over here at our our deacon, y'all pray for him. And uh, he got married at this church many, many years ago. Amen. I think it was around 1843. Somewhere in those old days, somewhere I think Noah was his best man yeah. at, his, at his wedding. <laughs> and we've got others in, that have been in church, you know, not as many as we used to have. We've got other people in this church been in this church 10 years, 15 years, or whatever, 20 years. And how is it that we've got some people in this, in this church, you might not have been in this church this time, but you've been living for Jesus Christ 50 years. Amen. Amen. That doesn't happen by accident. Mm -hmm. That happens on purpose. That's right. I believe that a saved person is saved forever. Mm -hmm. But I also believe that a saved person can by the grace of God, live for God. You're not saved by your work. You're not saved by living for God. But I believe after you're saved, I believe you can live for God for a long, long time with a proper maintenance program. Amen. Amen. Anybody that knows something again about, about any kind of machine knows you better maintain it. you got to do whatever it takes to maintain it, to keep it running. If it's a running machine... It's got to be maintained. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a few areas in which you Christian people, if you'll pay attention to this and do it, your Christian life will run. Yeah. What did they used to say about cars? Run like a sewing machine? Yeah. <laughs> a long time ago. Just, just run so smooth. Amen. Amen. I heard a car coming down the road, and I thought, boy, that thing is quiet. They realized it didn't have a regular engine. It was electric. Yeah. <laughs> but some cars just run so smooth. I remember having some cars that when you cranked up, you couldn't always tell if it was cranking off. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you might try and crank it again because it's so quiet. Mm -hmm. 
A Christian ought to be smoothly running for God. Amen. Even if it looks like he's going through a tough time in his life, yeah. he ought to be running smoothly for God. You ever look at somebody and think, wow, they don't have any problems? Not necessarily true. That's right. Amen. They, they, they do have problems, but by being spiritually maintained, they will just keep on going yeah. smoothly. Yeah. I'm going to give you four simple guidelines to help you keep doing right every day Amen. for the rest of your life. Amen. And I'm doing this knowing that God has got me right now in the perfect center of his will because he said in his word for the preacher to be careful to do this all the time. Yeah. And that is to affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. So if you're going to do that, number one, plan to do them. That's right. Plan to do good works. Right. If you're going to have a maintenance program, you've got to plan to do things. You've got to have a schedule. You've got to have an idea when I need to do this, this maintenance. Somebody, somebody says, well, well, let's just talk about your physical maintenance. Right. Somebody says, well, I go to the gym. When's the last time you went? October. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How long were you there? Well, it got interrupted. Only got to stay there about 20 minutes. But I went. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing might be true of, um, of changing your oil. Same thing might be true of working on your brakes or changing out your battery or anything else that, that you have to maintain. Be careful, the Bible says uh, here in, in verse 8. Uh, be careful to maintain good works. To be careful just simply means to pay attention to, to focus on, and to think about. Plan, number one, plan to do good works. Amen. The Bible tells you all kinds of good work. And in one place, it tells you to purge yourself from bad works. Mm -hmm. And it says that if a man, this is 2 Timothy 2.21, 2 Timothy 2.21 says, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Don't you want to be a vessel unto honor? Amen. Sanctify and meet, which means appropriate, meet for the master's use mm -hmm. and prepared unto every good work. Well, folk, I want to be a vessel that's meet for the master's use. Amen. Mm -hmm. I want to be somebody that God can do something with right. and get something done. Amen. I want to be dependable. Mm -hmm. Only thing that's dependable about some people is they are, you can mm -hmm. depend on them, they're going to be undependent. That's right. <laughs> I said that about computers one time. I said the only thing you can depend on computers is you can't depend on computers. Because one of these days, just when you think you're, you've got it all down, they shock you. Yeah. Anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about about waking up one morning and the updates are changing everything on your computer? Yeah. Plan to do good works. 2 Timothy 2.21 says if you would purge yourself, that is, you've got to decide that some things need to be cut out. Yeah. Some things need to be added in. I made up my mind there were certain basic things years ago as a Christian that were indispensable. Yeah. One of them was church yeah. and church attendance. Amen. From the very beginning, mm -hmm. when I married this little girl, from the very beginning, we got into church. Amen. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, we went to church. Amen. I don't remember everything about the beginning of our marriage. It was as far back as we was talking about with Brother Ron about, about how long he's been married. But I do remember that we made up our minds we need to be in church. I remember one Wednesday night where we had the temptation to miss church and go sightseeing. We just got married, and we got to see the big city of Baltimore. And Wednesday night only had a handful of people. This First Baptist Church of Havre de Grace, Maryland. And we thought about going and just riding around the big city of Baltimore. And we changed our minds and decided to go on to church. Amen. And I don't remember exactly what happened. I don't remember exactly what was preached or anything like that. But I remember that when that service was over, I realized I had nearly made a big mistake. Yeah. Because I had nearly made the mistake of choosing what we thought might be enjoyable and exciting for us to do as a family rather than go to church. Yeah. 
And I want you to know, I've been to a number of places. I've been to a few places overseas. None of them have done for me, my marriage, my health, my home, my life, what honoring God with this young lady right here as a kid, honoring God by being in church, Amen. has done for my life. Yep. Amen. The most momentous things that have happened in my life have happened as I have put God first. Amen. I haven't always put God first. I'm not saying I've always put God first even today. But the things that I've done that, that have been blessed of God and helped make me meet for the Master's use are choices I've made to put God first. Amen. Amen. Church attendance. <coughs> Tithing. Amen. From the get-go. Yeah. Just don't miss. That's right. Praying. Reading our Bibles. Mm -hmm. Getting married put me in the book. <laughs> hey folks you better get in the book if you're married Amen. if you want to survive your marriage right. read your Bible Amen. if you want your marriage to survive you yep. yeah. read your Bible Amen. get into the word get into the church mm -hmm. get on your knees in prayer these are basic things plan to do them figure out what's more important there are times where you have to say no. That's right. I remember in our early marriage, we were trying to figure out how can we do what we ought to do toward God and go and spend Christmas with some of our family and they were all going to be drinking there. Yeah. You remember those days? Yeah. We made the decision. We're not going to forsake God's will for our lives and get in a drinking environment. Amen. I don't care if we're related to every one of them. We're not going to do it. That's right. It's not right for us to go down to the, to the liquor store and hang around in there and sit and jaw with everybody and pretend we're not drinking anything. Mm -hmm. It's not right for you to go into the bar and sit there and have drinks all around you and pretend you're not drinking it not right for you to do it with kinfolk either. That's right. Amen. I wouldn't raise my children in that. I wouldn't mm -hmm. raise my wife in that. Mm -hmm. We just about did raise each other because we were so young at the time. <laughs> pick out your goals. Pick out what's important to you. Read the Bible and pray and say, God, what are you going to do with my life? Yeah. What are you going to do with my family? And prioritize those goals. And then plan out what you're going to do. And make all your plans subject to the will of God. Amen. For you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this Amen. or do that. But you need, to, you need to, if you really want to maintain good works, if you really want to keep doing right all your life, you have to plan to do good works. That's right. And what you're going to have to do is, your Bible reading is not going to happen unless you make up your mind, I'm going to do this. That's right. And if you're going to make up your mind to do this, guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to figure out where am I going to do this and when am I going to do this. Sure. There's nothing wrong with reading your Bible anywhere and everywhere yeah. to do your Bible reading. But you're probably not going to read your Bible through this coming year like I'm trying to persuade you to do if you don't plan a place. That's right. If you don't plan a time. That's right. now, I'd encourage you, I'll go ahead and encourage you once again, I'd encourage you to get up in the morning and do it. Yeah. Make you a regular place and do it. Number two, if you want to keep doing right the rest of your life, you're going to have to plan to do good works. I plan it. I pre Listen, I have absolutely nothing that to, to me is more important than church attendance. Amen. No activity. Amen. I'll miss a funeral before I miss church. Amen. I will. I'll miss a funeral of a relative before I miss church. Just will not do it. That's right. Church is more important to me. Church is... I believe church, church, faithful church attendance will be one of the tools that God will use to strengthen a marriage and save a marriage Amen. rather than putting somebody else or some other activity first. Yep. Ain't going to do it. Now, I have not had the courage to say to all of the kin folks, you know, that have planned a, a funeral uh, on Sunday. I've not had the courage to say to them, let the dead bury their dead. <laughs> yeah. Come down, follow me. I'm going to Sunday school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm trying to follow Jesus, but I haven't got to that one yet. But I did go ahead and go to Sunday school. Amen. Plan to do good works. Number two, if you want to keep doing right the rest of your life, pray to God for guidance and strength. Mm -hmm. Ask Him to help you. There are going to be times you're going to get weak. There are going to be times where the devil's really sinister, where he's really tricky. Right. Well. Without you leaning on the Lord, the devil's smarter than you are. Mm -hmm. Without you leaning on the Lord, getting direction from Him, from His Word and wisdom from Him, the devil's got lots more experience than you got. That's right. He's fooled a lot smarter people than you. Hey, do you think you're better than King David? You're not. You think you're smarter than Solomon? You're not. And guess what? If you don't lean on the Lord, the devil can mess with you too. Pray. Jesus told his disciples, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You need help to see your path. You need help to stay on track. You need help to steer you around bad stuff. Yeah. You need help to sustain you when you get when you get weak and weary. Mm -hmm. Anybody who ever has run a race of any distance and is a runner, you know, I, I'm not a runner, but somebody that is a runner knows what it's like to, to get almost worn out. And then from out of nowhere, it seems, you get what they call the second wind. Yeah. You get that second wind, and you're able to make it to the finish line. There are times when you're living for Jesus where you just got to get God to help you to the finish line. Amen. And God is compared to the wind in John chapter 3, yep. the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost can fill you and empower you and get you through. Amen. In winning fashion. Yep. I believe that. Amen. Pray for God. It's number three. If you want to keep doing right until the end of your life, all your days, number three, put aside weights. Yeah. Talk about heavy things that are weighing you down, yeah. that are keeping you from running free. Yeah. I want to be, I want to be like uh, Lazarus was when he got raised uh, from the dead. <laughs> they said, "Roll the stone away," and they said, "Loose him and let him go." Amen. I'm thankful for a church where I feel like I could preach that way. Amen. Loose him and let him go. We need some churches. Get this. We need some churches that will loose their preachers and let him go. Amen. I'm not talking about giving him walking papers to leave and go to another church. <laughs> I'm talking about giving him some freedom to serve God, to study, to win souls, to preach to lead the church, to look for Jesus to come at any moment. Let's stay busy until he comes. Amen. And I believe every Christian ought to get loose mm -hmm. and churches say to the Christian, let him go, let him run. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Best way for you to get loose is lay aside those weights. Yeah. And describing the Christian life as a race in Hebrews chapter 12, it says, wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with race, with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. That means there's some things that you can identify as weights. Yeah. Now I tell you this, if this will help you, we're trying to decide whether something's a weight. First of all, anything that's in the Bible is not a weight. It's only a weight to a disobedient Christian. Right. Oh, preacher, I think you're burning people down. Tell them they're all tired, they're weak. Tell them they ought to come to every church service. Tell them they ought to go to soul winning. Those aren't weights unless you're a wicked person. That's right. Amen. Those are commandments. Mm -hmm. Those are character traits of Christians. Mm -hmm. How do you identify a weight? Number one, a weight distracts you yeah. from your Christian service. That's right. right. A weight could be something as simple as a, as a hobby. Mm -hmm. Not bad, but it distracts you from Christian service. A weight, number two, delays you in doing right. Hey, if you're trying to run a race and you're wondering why you're always, you know, in the back group of people finishing the race, yeah. and you wonder why, it could be you've got lead, lead baited shoes. Mm -hmm. What have you got, what have you got lead all in the bottom of your shoes for? Mm -hmm. To well, it keeps my feet from hurting because I don't hit rocks. Yeah, but you've got an extra 10 pounds on every foot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed runners don't wear lead in their shoes? That's right. 
Have you noticed that, that, that they might be training, have you noticed that runners, they don't travel as heavy as they can when they're running the race? They go as light as they can because they're trying to get rid of weight because they want to finish the race and they want to finish it well. If you want to finish well, I want to finish well. I don't know how long I'm going to live. I hope the Lord gives me many years to live for Him. But if I'm going to live for God, i got to put aside the weights. That's anything that would distract me from doing God's will. That's anything that would delay me from doing right. Yeah. The third thing a weight does is it diminishes your capacity yeah. to finish well. You just concentrate on the weight so much that you just can't hardly concentrate on finishing the race. That's right. yeah. Then, if you want to... If you want to finish well, if you want to keep doing right all of your life, the fourth thing I would say concerning these good works, number one, plan to do them. Number two, pray for God's guidance and strength to do them. Number three, put aside weights so you can freely do them. Yeah. And then number four, just perform them. Amen. Perform the good works. You've talked about it, you've thought about it, you've made your to-do list. You know what it does you no good to spend an hour doing a to-do list if you don't look at it five minutes the next day? Perform it. Don't write down something you're not going to perform. Perform it. You prioritize and you decide something needs to be done, do it. Amen. Get up in the morning, make up your mind when you're going to do it, where you're going to do it, and do it. Amen. 2 Corinthians 8 1 says, Now therefore perform the doing of it. Mm -hmm. Preached a message not too long ago and do it. Yeah. That as there was a readiness to will, so that there may be a performance also out of that which you have. I am so glad that I can look on this congregation and I, and I looked and I prayed and I just waited. And then one day I saw you here at church step out into the aisle Amen. and come forward. Amen. Some of you took me off guard. Mm -hmm. Brandon, you took me off guard. Mm -hmm. But you did. Amen. Okay? Amen. Prayed for you yeah. for decades it seems like, dear lady. <laughs> Then one day, without me having any clue, she did it. Yeah. Wasn't too long ago. He did it. And I thank God for those who've done it. Amen. Yeah. Whether it be joining the church, whether it be getting saved, whether it's surrendering to baptism, whatever it is, when you finally said, I'm going to do it, that's when you perform the works. Right. <laughs> Lord helping me, I'll finish my Bible 121 times. Yeah. Maybe 122. I think it's 122. Wow. Um, at the end of this year. And the only way you'll ever finish your Bible is just do it. That's right. Amen. Start reading it. Don't worry about getting to the finish line. Just get in the race. Amen. <laughs> just get in the race and Amen. start running. That's right. And perform the good works. Do it. Do it with promptness. Do it with pleasure. Do it with persistence. But do it. Amen. 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 Join me in doing it. Amen. Join me in serving the Lord as long as He allows us to live. Amen. Will you stand with me, please? Amen. Heads bowed.